Hello, this is Aaron Dominion with the Creation Kit Scripting Series Papyrus Tutorials. Uh, we're covering events and functions. This is the eighth part of events and functions, and we're still in recursion. Uh, so, in this episode for recursion, we're going to talk about uh, the parameter based limits that recursions have. I know it's a little weird sounding, but uh, hopefully it will become clearer soon. So, uh, what am I saying by uh, parameter-based limits? Basically, your base case, uh, you're checking for it in the parameter, uh, which a lot of functions already do that, but I just want to formally talk about it, uh, even though we've done a lot of examples already. Um, but there's also some cases where uh, you have a parameter just designed to be, oh hey, you're going to check that value, and if one of your other parameters is not that value, then uh, you keep going. Otherwise, you just return it. So, uh, I answered part of this question already. Is a fixed value? It depends on your function. Uh, in the last episode, we did a multiplication via repetitive addition, and we did a division by repetitive subtraction. In the multiplication example, we saw the value change over the course of the execution, while in the divisions case, we saw the limiting value stay constant, which was divide by. Okay, so let's go straight into the examples. Uh, this is something I just thought of, add over and over. Basically, you pass it in uh, two values, and then the number of times to add it. It's sort of like multiplication except it's not. Although, I guess it could be multiplication because 1 plus 2, that's going to be uh, 3, and uh, 3 plus 3, or it's 3 times 2. So, uh, notice that times to add will not be a fixed value, though, in this case. Let's look at a case where we'll have a fixed value. Um, I'm going to use the factorial function since we've already touched that, but we're going to write it in a different way this time around. So instead of having only one parameter being uh, what you give it for, oh hey, I want this factorial of this value, and keep on going down, we're going to give it the initial value of 0, and then we're going to have the fixed value that's the desired factorial. Uh, I didn't change the function call here. Instead of fact of, let me change that real quick. So, we would have fact of 0, comma 4, and that would return 1 times 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, instead of in the reverse order. Then I gave another example with uh, 10. Uh, so let's go implement these two functions uh, real quick, just to give a little bit more example. Got the barrel function called recursion parameter limits. I've opened it up over here. Uh, let's set up our message boxes. So, first function test add over and over. So, debug dot message box. Then the result of adding one plus two three times is, and we're going to do add O and O, and we're going to give it one, two, and then three. Then we're going to do another one, the result of adding Three plus seven five times is then add O and O three seven and then five. So that's our first function that we're going to do, and then s second function factorial reverse. So debug dot message 
box. Uh, the result of factorial of 4 is... Oh, I forgot to concatenate. That would be very important. Uh, Toriel, reverse, and then 0, comma, 4. And then let's do another test uh, for the factorial of 10 is, and then we're going to call factorial reverse of 0, 10. Okay. So let's start with the add O and O function. So inputs first value to add, second value to add, how many times to add to each other and to future results. So, the purpose of this function is to take two values, add them together, and add them to the next step until uh, they are added the right number of times. Example, we're going to do uh, and o and o of 1 comma 1 comma 3 will equal 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Okay. So this is going to be an integer based function and o and o. And then we want to give it left value, right value, times to add. if times to add less than 2 we want to return left value plus right value this is uh, our last addition Let's call it a base case though, just to keep with the form that we've been using. Our last addition, then all other additions. So what we want to return here is two things. First, the left value plus the right value then we want to add that to and o and o of left value right value and then we want to have times to add minus one and that's our return value let's end if and that's our first function let's start work on the other function now So for factorial, we need the inputs, uh, the base value, and then our desired factorial. Purpose of this function is to calcul calculate factorial in reverse. Example, let's do uh, fact of 3, that's going to equal the, the 
excuse me, on this. It's going to equal 1 times 1 times 2 times 3. So, let's define factorial reverse, and then int base value, int uh, uh, desired value. So let's do our base case. If base value is equal to desired value, so if base value is equal to desired value, then we want to return. Oh we need a special case here because if you put the desired value of zero so if base value is less than one we want to return zero else we want to return base value that's going to be end of that sub if segment then else all other cases um, let's put documentation here just to explain uh, for base value of zero and we want to return one not zero whoops all other base values then here we want to return uh, actually we want to do the same check again uh, for base value of zero notice this is a slightly uh, less efficient because you have two if checks instead of one So base value is less than 1, return, and then we want to do 1 times factorial reverse of, and then we want the base value plus 1, and then we want to have desired value there. And then we want to do all their cases. Turn one times factorial reverse. And then we want to still add the base value. Oh no, excuse me, we don't want to do one there, we want to do base value. Okay, let's go back to the arguments here base value and then we want the desired value since that will be fixed so that should be the recursive function oh we forgot a few things or I did so forgot to end this if block And in this one, we forgot to end this one. So everything should be good now. Let's edit the source and compile it. I goofed up over here and I used and instead of add. Okay. This should compile now. Okay. I will see everybody in game in a moment to make sure these functions work. All right, we are here in game. Let's see if our add over and over function works and our factorial function. 
once it loads. Okay, so we added 1 plus 2 three times. So 1 plus 2 is going to be 3, and 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9, which we got the result. Alright, 3 plus 7, that's going to be 10, and we added that five times, we got 50. That's working. It gave us the factorial of 10 first. I don't know offhand if that's right, so we're about to find out. I'm going to use a calculator off uh, <laughs> site for a moment, just to make it easier on everybody so I don't work it out mentally. And that is the right result for factorial of 10. And we get the result of 24 for factorial of 4. So those functions are working perfectly. And I will see everybody uh, for the conclusion of the video in a moment. And we are back. Uh, if you have any questions over parameter-based limits, uh, at least as I uh, described them, uh, feel free to message me. Also, if you have questions about past episodes, future content, special topic requests, or scripting questions in general, free, feel free to message me. Uh, I'm going to have my profile information here for net the Nexus, and uh, YouTube's also a valid uh, way to get a hold of me. Uh, this information will also be in the description, along with any supplementary information. And I will see everybody on the next episode.